Nothing says I love you more than braised beef. People, Valentine's Day is coming up. If you want to make something for your loved one and really knock their socks off, this is the meal to do it. Today I want to show you how to make a show-stopping short rib dinner for this price. It is a little bit of work, don't be scared, stick with me, and let's get into it. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. Today's dish will be one of the best recipes on my channel. I'm actually getting married this September and it's time for your boy to slim down. So the best diet for me is a low carb diet. And because I'm trying to diet a little bit, I imagine the content on my channel for the next few months will have a lot of low carb recipes. So if you're into low carb recipes, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss them. Today's dish is a five star meal with pretty much zero carbs in it. And when you're eating this dish, I'm telling you, you don't even miss carbs because it's just so rich and flavorful and awesome. Like, you, you guys really should make this. Speaking of dishes that you really should make, I already did a video showing you how to braise short ribs and I used the short ribs in a pasta dish. It was incredible. So make sure you check that out if you like short ribs, but let's go into the process again. So if you're gonna make this dish at home, I created a little prep list here to help you out. I'm gonna show you guys how to do every task listed in this video, but I would go ahead and screenshot this for reference if you decide to tackle this in your own kitchen. The day one tasks we're gonna break down over the first half of the video approximately, and the day two tasks we're gonna break down over the second half of the video. So let's do it. Okay guys, so you can use either short ribs or beef ribs for this recipe. These are beef ribs, they're a little bit longer than short ribs, and I think presentation wise, they look a little bit cooler. They're also cheaper, treat them both the same. No matter which beef you use, you're going to generously season both sides with salt and pepper. Make sure you get every single side and surface of the beef. And into your favorite braising vessel, you're going to put down some oil followed by your beef. And you're going to kind of let these things just do their thing in there, crisp up on all sides, nice and brown. And once they're all browned on all sides, go ahead and remove them and set them aside. Into that same pot, we're going to put one onion, two stalks of celery, and two carrots followed by three crushed garlic cloves. I'm gonna give that a mix just so everything can start to get a little toasty. I'm gonna season that with some cracked black pepper. Next, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of tomato paste, and then I'm just gonna mix that around so the tomato paste can coat all the vegetables and get toasty as well. Once the vegetables have sweated down and are fragrant, I'm gonna grab some red wine, and I'm gonna add about two cups of this drinkable red wine to my vegetables. Once the wine's in there, I'm gonna just take my time and make sure I scrape every last bit of beef goodness off the bottom of the pan so everything is mixed into my sauce. Once it is and the wine has cooked down a little bit, I'm going to add four cups of beef broth, preferably homemade, but store-bought will do just fine. Once my broth is added, I'm going to bring everything up to a boil and add two bay leaves and a bundle of thyme that I tied together. Lower it to a simmer and then put my beef ribs back in nice and gently. And then I'm going to put the lid on that and tuck it in and let that simmer on the stove for about two hours over low heat while I do the other stuff. So all we're gonna do today is just chop up our cauliflower so it's easy to steam tomorrow. So just chop it up, remove all the green stuff, chop it up and put it into containers and that's all we're gonna do with the cauliflower today. For our beets, I was taught by one of the chefs I work for to always cook beets with lemon juice. So into a pot of boiling water, we're going to add the juice of one lemon and make sure you cook these beets separately because as you can see, the red beet stains everything. And we wanna keep all of his juices to himself. So I'm gonna cook both beets with lemon juice in separate pots until they're fork tender. By the way, if you're in Connecticut, there's only one store that carries golden beets year round and that's Market 32. You can buy beets with either the beet greens attached or detached. We're not trying to mess with the beet greens today, so we're just going to buy the beets that have the greens removed. You can also cook with the greens, but for today, it's easier to just buy these ones without the greens. So Market 32 is the grocery store that carries these golden beets. So back to the kitchen, once my beets are fork tender, I'm gonna put each of them into their own ice bath. Once these are cool enough to handle, I'm gonna just rub them with my thumb and get all the peels off. You should be able to get most of the peels of both beets off with just your thumbs, but there may be parts that won't come off, so just use a paring knife. You wanna use the knife sparingly because you wanna preserve the nice round shape of the beets. Once they're all peeled and cooled, we're gonna go ahead and cut those down. So you're gonna slice these pretty thin, like maybe two quarters 
quarters thickness, I guess. And the golden beet is really an underappreciated, beautiful vegetable, if I do say so myself. Here's just another view of the thickness of the golden beets, how I was slicing them. You can see we're doing this pretty thin. So go ahead and cut up all those beets into slices, both the golden beet and the red beet. And then we're going to set those into separate containers, just like we did the cauliflower. So we're going to serve crispy shallots on top of this meal. So on day one, you're just going to remove the ends of the shallot and peel them. And I'm using a mandolin. You can also use a knife if you want to, but the mandolin is just way more consistent and fast. I'm going to cut rings in the shallots, being sure not to slice my finger on the mandolin. And then I'm going to set all those nice shallot rings into a container with the rest of my stuff. Those shallot ends right there, I'm just going to throw into the bubble bath with my beef ribs. Another garnish for the meal is horseradish goat cheese. This little nub was like 30 cents at the grocery store. So to my six ounces of goat cheese i'm going to grate in one to two tablespoons of fresh horseradish mix that in together and that's going to be our horseradish goat cheese one final little touch for the dish is clarified butter so i'm going to start by bringing four sticks of butter to a simmer if you're taking the time to clarify butter you want to go ahead and do a lot of it this is just the four pack from costco and i'm going to let that bubble for about 10 minutes so the water can evaporate after that happens you'll be left with this layer of milk solids on the top of the butter i'm going to skim that off with a spoon and whatever's left i'm going to run through a cheesecloth and a strainer the cheesecloth I folded over itself like six times. The cheesecloth and strainer should catch the milk solids and you'll be left with clarified butter on the bottom. If you are an overachiever you can run that through a coffee filter and get the most bang for your buck but that's gonna take an hour or so just so you know but it's definitely worth it if you have time to just let it kind of do its thing on the counter. And you want to keep clarified butter in your fridge if you can. It has a higher smoke point than regular butter. It's an awesome oil to cook with but my favorite way to eat it is on vegetables which is what we're gonna do in this video. So let's check on our beef. It's been bubbling nice and gently for about two hours now. I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove that bundle of thyme from the mixture. The beef should be tender, but it shouldn't fall off the bone. If you cook this for too long, the meat will just fall right off the bone, which is not what we want. We want it to kind of stay on there. I'm going to let this cool down on my counter for at least an hour with the meat in the liquid. This is going to kind of reabsorb some of that juice and be extra tender when we reheat it. Once it's cooled down the room temperature, I'm going to remove the ribs and put them into containers, and then I'm going to strain the stock over a sieve, and I'm going to save both the liquid and the vegetables. I'm going to throw those vegetables in my fridge and then I'm going to put the stock into containers along with the ribs and put it all in my fridge. So that's the last thing we need to do on day one. So we've got all of our mise en place here for day two. You can definitely do all this in the same day, but it makes it so much more convenient if you just do all this stuff the first day. Then you can cook the meal for whoever you want on day two or day three. Even day four if you want, you can leave this in your fridge for four days. So when you have time before the meal, do this. But it's done and stay tuned for day two. So it's time to serve this meal. You can see my stock has congealed and I have a nice fat layer on the top of it. So the first thing we're going to do is just take a spoon and remove that fat layer. You can fry eggs in that. You can use it to make roux and soups and sauces. You can use it just like you would any other saturated fat. So keep that in the fridge. That's low-key liquid gold there, or I guess solid gold. Now we're going to take all that delicious beef broth and put it into a pan and begin to reduce it down. Once it's starting to reduce a little bit, we're going to put our ribs back in, keep it on low, put a lid over it, and you're going to let that reheat for 15 15 to 20 minutes. While those are reheating, we're going to get our cauliflower steamed off. So I'm going to put my florets over a steam bath, put a lid on it until they're fork tender. Once they're fork tender, I'm going to put them into a food processor with one half of a caramelized onion, which I did off camera yesterday, sorry, and the vegetables from my beef braising liquid, along with one quarter cup of vegetable stock. You can make this with heavy cream if you want to as well, but I'm trying to keep the components of the dish light. Once it's blended up, we're going to season it with salt, pepper, give it another mix, give it a taste, and when it's good, we're going to put it into a gallon Ziploc bag, and it will stay warm until serving. Onto two lightly oiled baking sheets, we're going to lay out our beets to be reheated. Again, make sure you do them on separate trays so we keep that red beet juice off of everything else. And we're going to season the tops of those with salt and pepper and a drizzle of olive oil. And then we're going to roast those in the oven at 375 degrees for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, they should be nice and roasty toasty. And what you're looking for is the red beets. When you rub them, they don't leave a trail behind. We don't want a trail of red juice on our plates. The last thing we need to do before service is make our fried shallots. So into a cold pot, I'm going to put my shallots and some cold oil, just enough oil to cover, and then I'm going to turn my heat on. This is going to cook them nice and gently. And once they're lightly golden brown, I'm going to remove them over a paper towel or 
or a wire rack and then season them with salt while they're still hot. By this time our ribs are nice and hot and our sauce is almost completely reduced. I'm going to set those aside and reduce it the rest of the way. What I'm looking for is my spatula to leave a trail in the sauce. That's how I know it's thick enough. This is one of the best sauces that you can make in the culinary world, IMO. Now that our components are warm, it's ready to plate. So we're going to put down our beets and we're going to shingle them in a nice pretty ring like this, followed by a spoonful of our mashed cauliflower right in the center of that. I'm going to gently set my beef rib on top of the cauliflower, followed by that delicious rich beef pan sauce. Next, our crispy shallots on top of the beef, followed by the horseradish goat cheese crumble on top of the beets. Next for the beets, we're going to drizzle on the clarified butter. This is a small touch that makes those beets some of the best beets that you can eat. Lastly, we're going to garnish the beets with something green. I'm using chives here. You could also use basil if you wanted to. And that's it, guys. Honestly, probably the best looking dish I've made on my channel to date. And also, my fiance said this is one of the best foods I've cooked for her in about four years. And I've cooked her a lot of food. So if that doesn't tell you that you need to make this dish, I don't know what will. So make it for yourself. Make it for a loved one. Whoever eats this dish will love it. And if they tell you otherwise, they are lying. Thanks for watching, guys.